Hello. Good morning. Why don't we start with a joke? What did the mayonnaise say to the cheese? Shut the door, I'm dressing. <laughs> that joke is a little old. In fact, that joke is ancient. That joke is so old, you may have never heard it before, so you're welcome. Now, a more relevant conversation going on inside the refrigerator might be the mayonnaise saying to the cheese, oh my gosh, I'm so lonely, I haven't seen a vegetable in here in over three weeks. Or the cheese might be saying to the mayonnaise, I really wish this person would commit to eating their vegetables, to eating their leftovers because they're starting to grow mold, starting to get a little bit scary in here, and we need to plot our escape. Who's in that situation? All right, lots of us. The conversation of tomorrow in the refrigerator would be something like the cheese and the mayonnaise teaming up to tell your insurance company who's looking inside of your fridge to drop you from your insurance premiums. And this one's not as funny. Why do we know this? Because today, the refrigerator can talk. And not only can the refrigerator talk, but the refrigerator has Facebook. Very interesting. Is this good or bad? My name's Chase. I'm an adjunct professor at Holt International Business School, and I want to know what the refrigerator is saying. What could a talking refrigerator possibly say? Is it something like when you go home, the refrigerator says hello to you? Is it more intimate? Does the refrigerator ask you how your day is? And can that refrigerator detect emotion in your voice and say, I recognize that you, sir, are having a bad day. And I want to remind you, there's ice cream in here. Why don't you have some ice cream? The world is always better with ice cream. Go ahead, you've been working hard. Is that what the refrigerator is saying? Well, that still doesn't address the question, why does the refrigerator need Facebook? Well, let's think about what a networked refrigerator can do for us. You're low on milk. Now, the refrigerator can understand this. The refrigerator can say, I recognize you're low on milk. Let me send a message to your phone saying, you're low on milk, pick it up on your way home. Also, you're rushing off to work. Your kids are rushing off to school. Somebody leaves the milk out of the fridge. Now, the refrigerator can recognize this and say, somebody left the milk out. Come home and put it back in the fridge, or come pick some up on your way home. Now, that's very interesting. We have a refrigerator that can tell us things, that can alert us of things, and that's pretty cool. Does this create a social good? I believe it does. But let's go deeper down the rabbit hole. Your refrigerator is connected. It's connected to everything. Let's say you're on a diet. Your refrigerator can find out this information because it's connected to the outside world. It can see your progress. It can see the changes you've made in your diet. It can see that giant cake that you just put into your refrigerator. And it can say, hold on. I don't think you should eat that cake. I can see you're making progress. I can see that you've been running. How does the refrigerator know you've been running? Quite simple, treadmills have Facebook as well these days. The refrigerator can say, you have a cake in here, you're about to slip. I see your progress, I see how close you are to your goal. I'm going to say, no more. Do not eat that cake. I will not let you eat that cake. That creates a social good as well. The refrigerator is helping us. Let's go deeper down the rabbit hole. Data for sale. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a hopeless romantic for data. <laughs> I want to know what the fridge is saying because if there's one thing that Facebook is good at, it's protecting their right to sell and distribute your data. If you did not know Facebook was selling your data, you need to wake up now. But let's think about some possible applications about this. Let's think about if this was in good hands. Now, you're coming home on a Friday night. And you have just put out on Facebook, 
I'm going home to the most wonderful night of my life. I'm going to sit on the sofa with the love of my life and watch the best series of movies ever, Star Wars 1 through 6. Now, the refrigerator, looking inside, says, wait a second, you're coming home to this, but there's no food. You're about to watch the greatest movies of all time without any food? That's not going to happen. Let's put this data on the market. Who could possibly be interested in this data? Well, a pizza restaurant. The pizza restaurant sees you're coming home to watch the greatest movies of all time, and the pizza restaurant says, here's an opportunity for me to sell to you because you have no food. Pizza restaurant buys the data, sends the information to your phone, saying, if you order within the next 10 minutes, I'm going to give you a discount. I'm also going to ensure that de the delivery of the pizza comes 15 minutes after you arrive at home because I also have that information. Now, where exactly in this did we cross the line? Or did we cross the line? Did we cross the line by selling your personal information? Did we cross the line where we told the pizza restaurant when you're going to be home? And more importantly, when you're not home? Did we cross the line at all? Now, that's the question that I want to know about the refrigerator. I want to know what the fridge is saying. So we have to ask ourselves the question, what's in your fridge? Let's think about that. What is in your fridge? Food. Simple answer. But this is not a simple question. I don't care about what's in your fridge for this. I'm a hopeless romantic for data. If data was a person, I would love it, I would cherish it, I would hold it, I would kiss it goodnight, I'd want to understand it, talk to it, it would listen to me as well. That would be the perfect relationship for me. <laughs> But unfortunately, data is not a person. It is a series of interactions between people, it is a series of interactions between devices, and it is a series of interactions between people and devices. That's what data is. So my love affair with data is limited just to what's up here. But anyway, what I want to know is what this says about you. Now, let's imagine what this says about you, and let's take a social example. First dates. Now, first dates are very awkward, and this guy for sure knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> first dates are very confusing, at least for me. You're getting asked all these questions. People are asking you all of these questions. You're trying to get to know the person better. You know, you have no idea if they're being honest. But wait a second. Our fridge has Facebook. Our fridge is networked. Think about this. Someone says, you know, I really like to stay in shape. I love to stay in shape. I know you can't tell right now. It's just I've been working too hard. You know, I'll get back in the gym, and when you see my body, I know you're going to be impressed. I know that. I'm also super creative. Don't worry about it. Now, you're savvy, and your fridge is Facebook. What can you do? Well, let's say you just, you just pull out your phone every day we have data at our fingertips, and you start going through your phone looking for what's in this person's refrigerator. Now, this is going to be interesting. This is going to change the world, because you're going to be going through this person's refrigerator and saying, now, you said you like to stay in shape. You told me you eat healthy, but I haven't seen a single fruit or vegetable in your refrigerator in the past three months. In fact, I'm frankly surprised that you're even alive based on the contents of your refrigerator. How do you do it? You're a miracle of science. You said you were creative, but I don't think so. I mean, I, I see what you're cooking, and to me, this isn't creative. I don't think it's going to work out. That's pretty interesting, right? We can filter people. There's more people on Earth than ever before, and we can filter them down based on what's in their fridge. Dating sites should be all over this data. That's pretty cool. Now, let's go into a more socially responsible example. You're sick. You're on your way to the emergency room, and you get to the doctor, and the doctor no longer has to ask you any questions. They can look in your fridge, what have you been eating? They can look for that symptom, they can look for why this is happening, and they can say, all right, I know the problem, I'm going to save your life. 
No more asking you questions while you're delusional, while you're in extreme pain. Now we can solve a problem. And this is why I love data. This is why I've been put on this earth, is to understand problems like this and use data to solve them. Now we run into trouble. Because this data is not just for sale to the dating websites, to us, it's open to everybody. What happens when we start getting asked these questions by our employer, by our insurance companies, by our banks, when our bank says, I can see inside of your refrigerator and I'm not going to give you that loan. Why? You're not spending enough time with your family. How do I know that? You're not cooking family foods. I'm not going to give you this loan because I think your family is going to split up. I think so because I can see that from your refrigerator. Is that too personal? What happens when your insurance company says, you're giving your kids too much soda? I think they're going to be obese. You're eating too much cholesterol. I think there's a risk. Your premiums are going up, or even worse, you're dropped from coverage. What happens then? Remember, there's no diagnosis here, just a prediction based on your personal information. What happens when your employer says, sorry, you didn't get that promotion? You drink too much. You're messy. You're disorganized. You're not eating healthy. I can see you're up at three o'clock in the morning opening the fridge. I think you have anxiety. You can't handle the pressure. What happens when that happens? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. Because if our fridge looks like this, and after we know our data's for sale, it looks like this, is this good or bad? Now, from the photo, it looks pretty good. But remember, this is not a simple question. Therefore, there is no simple answer. The real question we need to be asking ourselves is not whether this picture looks better than that picture. The real question we need to be asking ourselves is, is this an infringement on my personal freedoms? Does this restrict my freedom to choose? Now, this is very interesting. And this is why I want to know what the fridge is saying. Not only do I want to know what the fridge is saying, I want to know what the talking refrigerator is telling people about me. Because today, big data has become personal. No, it hasn't become personal. It's become intimate. We're not only letting data into our refrigerators, ladies and gentlemen. It's all over. Facebook used to be for everyone. Now we can say it's everywhere. We've let big data into our kitchens, through our refrigerators, through our stoves. It's all throughout our house in our thermostats. What kind of information can we get from that? When are you home? When are you not home? How many people do you live with? All sorts of things. We've let data into our living rooms. We've let data into our bedrooms and our medicine cabinets. Does this restrict your personal freedom? And more importantly, what are we doing to address these issues? Who's regulating the data collectors? Thank you. <laughs>